said you run a Euro, Euro podcast? Yeah, I have uh, a couple actually. I have uh, one that's head trauma. It's about. Um, well, well, hold on. We'll, we'll, we'll get to it right yeah. now. That way, <laughs> that way we get it on recording. Um, yeah, so of course. I, I know we're jumping again, so let me bring you in real quick. Um, yeah, sounds great. All right. Um, this week, welcome back, film noobs. Um, as you see, we're continuing our series on catching up and bringing people on board. As always, we love to talk to brand new uh, content creators, filmmaker, filmmakers, uh, freaking badass people. Mike, um, I had the pleasure of meeting when I went to uh, Heiko for the Billy the Kid Film Festival, and I saw his film. And and I'll be honest, I I. Don't not that I don't like documentaries, but most yeah. of the time they're done to where like oh, okay another documentary. But when I sat down and I watched yours, man, by the end of the day I was about ready to cry. I was like, "Yep, this is a good one." Um, not only the message is is done done well, or or the message is a really badass message, but it's done well. Um, it's done with care, with love, and you could see it. Um, but be. Before I continue, um, let me bring you in real quick. Uh, Mike, uh, introduce yourself. Hey, how you doing? This is Michael Roth. I'm glad to be on the show. Thank you for having me. I'm, oh, I'm sorry. My alarm just went off. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Um, but yeah, thank you for having me, man. Cool. No, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, so you are a documentary filmmaker by nature or is it just uh where you ended up yeah David. so i my my uh my background uh was in news originally i was in uh a morning show producer for abc uh, i went to school for uh for journalism uh a radio television production mainly um just to age myself they had a department called radio television production um they don't have that anymore it's like a mass media production now uh what, but uh, uh southern illinois university yeah and uh the salukis so uh yeah I, I started i started there um i always had like a inclination to do films and stuff like that we made like little films when i was a kid and stuff like that but that's really where i kind of honed my craft and and got into uh to making, uh, you know, media and stuff like that. So, uh, I had a, uh, another documentary, uh, before that, uh, right after, uh, I got out of school and, uh, yeah, and that's, that's pretty much it, but I got my background pretty much in news. And so, you know, documentary filmmaking kind of came naturally to me. Uh, you know, I do little short films like the 48 hour film project, yeah. uh, recently, and um doing another one here shortly um and uh, you know we we have a couple of short films that are doing that but uh films in general but yeah documentary is mainly what i've what i've created to you know put out you know to the film festival circuit and stuff like that and i've had a couple of those so but this uh recent one adapt um is probably my most successful uh, to date so so let's talk about that one because that's the one I actually saw, and like I said, man, at the end, at the end, I was ready to like just start bawling because it's a really good message, man. Um, and I it's done it. with lots of care, and that's what I love—the fact that it's done with care, and you could see it. Um, so tell us about adapt. Yeah, so adapt. Um, I had the idea uh, to make a documentary about um, Special Olympics athletes uh adaptive physical education athletes on um, their two separate programs uh, and follow these uh, student athletes throughout the course of a school year and uh follow their families and follow the coaches and um just see what it takes to put on you know um a program where we we teach kids about physical education and um get them to you know out after school to uh extracurricular uh you know, sporting events like, you know, I would say bowling, basketball and uh, track are the main ones that uh, we were a part of at Northeast ISD. But the uh, Special Olympics has a plethora of sports that, you know, athletes can can choose from. So we highlight, you know, a lot of those as well. Now, I know in the movie, um, the coordinator was talking about picking um, certain sports that could translate not just in the field but at home so easily one you could easily do at home 
you know, with the families, because that's that's one of the biggest things that to be able to do stuff with your kid, you know, what I mean, the ability to do stuff with your kid, especially if it's a special needs kid. Um, and so she was talking about how they were trying to adapt a lot of the sports so you could take them home. And not only that, but continue to do that and continue that that connection with the kid. Absolutely. So a big part of special education is um, in general not just when it comes to sports or games and stuff like that is uh, continued uh, education outside of the classroom. So ultimately we want to see uh, our athletes, our, our kids um, uh, have a uh, skill that they can, that they can carry, you know, over into their transition in and out of, you know, high school. So uh, that's a, that's a huge part, not only in, in, like I said, sports, but, you know, uh, placing having them have skills where they you know can place them in, in jobs and stuff like that and you know sports has always been um a a a good tool for um you know any anyone not just special needs people to um kind of you know work together learn how to work together as a team um also learn you know individual uh responsibilities for those individual sports and stuff like that and to um, be able to differentiate so um i think the the goal always is to have our student athletes have uh, a knowledge of something that they maybe didn't have before. Awesome. Now, and I asked you this question when, when uh, it was our turn to pretty much, you know, converse after your film. And I, and I wanted it in that way we could share it here, but how do you separate yourself as a filmmaker who has to constantly be there and it's a hard subject because it is a hard subject. How do you separate yourself as a filmmaker from the subject? Yeah. So at the time I was actually adapted physical education coach and special Olympics coach for Northeast ISD when I made this film. Uh, so I was working and then I would take personal days um, to go visit uh, other schools that I personally wasn't, you know, coaching and, uh -huh. and um, document, you know, those coaches and those students and stuff like that. So um, it was, it was kind of in this particular instance, uh, difficult to kind of separate myself from it because I was involved with, with, you know, the, the inner workings of getting these, um, events up and running and stuff like that. You know, there's, there's, I think anywhere between 12 and 15 coaches, uh, you know, per the year, depending on, you know, the manpower that we had. Yeah. And, um, so I was just one of, one of those, you know, people that, um, helped, you know, do that. So, uh, in this particular case, there was really no separation. I, I kind of had to, you know, hit the ground running. All those subjects were either previous students of mine or, you know, colleagues. So, uh, to, to separate from that, uh, I guess a little bit, you, you kind of just have to have your, your little, uh, binder of like questions you're going to ask and kind of how you want to, you know, drive the narrative and ask questions to, uh, kind of look and, and, and find out the story that you're, you're, uh, capturing at the moment, but you, you, you're really left at the whim of, uh, you're, you're really left at the, the whim of, of the answers that you get when you, when you do your uh, documentary, you know, uh, questions and your, uh, your, when you're, when you're interviewing the subject or whatever. And so you're looking at, at this documentary from an insider point of view. Yes. Because you are right. Mm -hmm. Man, that's Absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, I mean, it was, it was an insider point of view. Um, I, you know, you try to be uh, as unbiased as you can possibly be. Um, but, you know, so, sometimes, you know, you, when you, when you're creating the narrative as a documentary filmmaker, um, your, your bias does kind of shine through. And that's, that's kind of what I found out, you know, throughout the course of this and uh, bias not being a negative word. I mean, it's like, you, oh, know, yeah. you see, you know, beautiful, you know, things that unfold in front of you, but uh you know, you, you, you definitely pick a theme and you, and you try to, you know, stick to that when you edit and, uh, and try to create the story, you know, over the course of, uh, you know, we filmed for over the course of like a whole school year. So a lot of footage, you know, close to like, you know, if close to like 200 hours worth of documented wow. footage. Yeah. That's a yeah. lot. Yes, it is. Yeah. So you said you filmed for about a year. So what was the post uh, <clears throat> post production like? Uh, post production. You know, it was it was a learning curve for me. Uh, so, you know, I, I did, you know, some things that maybe the standards didn't really um, <laughs> it didn't really sync up because when I would give it off to, you know, someone that, you know, edits uh, professionally and stuff like that, they're like, well, how how come it's, you know, all the stuff is named or whatever. And I just 
I went through it. I had to like put my hands on every piece of footage. So you'd sit down, watch it. Um, I would name it. And then, and then from there you would just edit it. But, um, you know, I, it was, it was a very, um, uh, involved uh, process with, with with looking through all that footage, to say the least. Okay, sorry, I had to tell my daughter I was on a oh, podcast. No worries. <laughs> it's, life happens while you're. Doing yeah, of course. <laughs> no, let's talk about that. Life happens, man. Oh, um, yeah. So you're a special needs coach. You're mm -hmm. doing a filmmaker. Yes. And life how do you balance all three of them well you know uh i after this year of uh you know this is kind of my swan song to you know special olympics and to um adaptive phys adapted physical education um you know at the time uh it was there was a lot of spinning plates it was hard to kind of balance all of it because i had to do the full-time job i had to do this um i took a year off just to do you know the editing and stuff like that and um and I, you know, I, I wasn't the only person that was in the editing room, but um, I did the lion's share of, of uh, you know, the the main, you know, theme and stuff like that. And, you know, B-roll was added after the fact and stuff like that. And I had people help me with that and just, you know, kind of uh, go through those motions. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it was, it was a lot, you know, in, during the filming of it, uh, it was um it was still a lot you know when i was editing it but it was it was less because i i wasn't you know uh teaching at that time so oh, okay cool now <laughs> going going on with with filmmaking especially with documentary a lot of times most of us don't want to tackle on documentaries because it's it's a hard beast to kind of team yeah what's your process for doing documentaries uh, my process for doing documentaries is, uh, you know, obviously first pick a subject that you're interested in or that kind of lights your fire, mm -hmm. um, because if, if you're not if you're not invested in it, uh, especially on the independent level, um, you know, it'll it'll shine through. Um, so this was very you know, this topic was very important to me. I wanted to get as much information as I could out to the general public about, you know, programs uh, such as the Special Olympics or PALS for that instance, where the general education kids come in and help, you know, the kids with special needs. Um, so, you know, my advice would just be, you know, get involved with something that you like, you know, because that's ultimately what's going to uh, let your fire to to continue the process. Because, you know, even for example, for example, this this documentary, even though I was totally interested in it and I was totally invested in it and, I, you know, I was, I was payrolling, you know, the, the film and stuff like that, like there was days even with the subject that I, matter that I absolutely loved um, that, you know, yeah, it, the the. the um, the tedious nature of of filming and and making sure that all your subjects are at you know one location and stuff like that um you know it takes a toll it it, it does uh get a little overwhelming sometimes so um yeah just picking something that you you're passionate about because um on those days that you're kind of dragging a little bit um it it kind of uh re re uh, kindles and starts you know, the fire you know when when the days that you don't want to do it, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, and we've all had those days as filmmakers, I'm sure. So, oh yeah. Even in, in feature filmmaking, there's, you reach like the second week or third week of you're shooting straight forward. And you're like, dude, I'm, I'm just tired. Even though we've taken two, three days off here and there, whatever. Yeah. Oh, of course. You know, yeah. You're tired with dealing with people, period. Of course. Yeah. But and that's I, good. Yeah. I was going to, I was going to say like, um, you know, th that was another interesting thing about the documentary is just dealing with all the different personalities, you know, so it's uh, that's its its own job in its own right. You know, man, I can imagine because you're dealing with with admin people, which yes. you know, regular admin people, because they got their stuff they got to focus on. Absolutely. With parents that are trying to deal with the their kids having the the I guess the the help needed you know yeah. maintain for them and then you're dealing with your personal life and your personal stuff yes as well as you teaching and coaching and so forth man dude you have a lot of shit to juggle dude yeah yeah it was i mean it was a lot um and there was you know like i said there was days where you know you 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 woke up you're like oh man like but you know at the end of the day like you you get to uh i i get to do this right like this is a privilege for me to like go and and document people and and to 
you know, uh, meet new people and to, you know, tell their story. So I, I took that very, um, seriously when I was doing this and, and tried to, you know, um, you know, ethically portray a film that, that captured, um, you know, that, that moment in time, uh, and also just convey the subjects, you know, as best as I could to get their, their best qualities across. Cause I wanted to, I wanted to show like how amazing these people are and, and what they do to help, you know, these kids, uh, with special needs, you know, and, uh, and how amazing the families are and, and, and how, you know, supportive and, and loving they are. So, I mean, I think I, I portrayed that and I got that across, but yeah, I mean, sometimes it's, it's a lot, you know, dealing with the different personalities and the, you know, on, uh, suspected, you know, things that pop up, you know, during any production of a film. Yeah, man. Now I, I got a question for you because as documentary maker, you have a narrative that, regardless of everybody has a narrative but did you ever find yourself you're like man if only they would have said this if only they would have and you try to corral them back into that narrative trying to fix the narrative that you mm -hmm. had in your mind and at the end of the day you're like oh no or was one of the those like man dude that's badass that, let's go this way because it's just a happy little accident that gives me more quality of of, of footage more quality of of information this way which one or yeah it's kind of it's kind of a little bit of both right like so um ultimately you want to get your main message across them and i think when you have the the questions that are pointed um you know that kind of takes care of itself if you want to get a specific answer on a specific you know event or whatever um you know that that's taken care of just with how you phrase the question but ultimately you go into i mean i i this is i've done two and every time I go into making a documentary, you know, film, it's it's ultimately um, you have a plan. The the plan kind of just, uh, you know, I guess doesn't, um, you know, go off as is in 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 the direction that you want it to go, and you just kind of adapt and you kind of pivot and you kind of just um, you know do your best to capture what what their emotions are, and that's that's actually where you get your best stuff. Like you were saying, like, you know, some, sometimes you, you have an idea of where something should go and it goes completely the opposite way, but it's better because it's real. You know what I mean? And that's, that's the reaction that the person has. And you can, you can sit and at the beginning of the documentary, I think I was more uh, focused on that, but then, you know, towards the end, it was more just, you know, fast and loose and, and letting, letting people just, you know, tell their story um, and just get their reaction. Now, what was the biggest, and I, I think they asked you this during the, the the film festival, what was the biggest hurdle, especially because you are dealing with a protective or protected subject as, you know, special needs kids. Yeah. What was one of the hardest things that you had to overcome at making this film? Uh, just finding out what needed to be done um, to to get it done. You know what, I mean? you know what I'm saying? So, um, like, I got release forms for pretty much all of my main subjects and, and stuff like that. And all that, you know, the kids I knew would be in there. Um, so, you know, that, that was, uh, I wouldn't say it was difficult. I mean, I actually put boundaries up in my mind beforehand. I'm like, oh man, what if they say no? What if the parents say no? What if, yeah. what if they don't allow me to, you know, document? Um, what I found is I, you know, uh, a lot of uh, kids and parents that have children with special needs, they're excited to get their story, you know, out there. You know what I mean? Because I think sometimes they look, they feel like they're overlooked. So uh, shining a spotlight on this uh, really um, got a lot of people excited. Um, and I, I honestly didn't run into any, um, uh, you know, hiccups when it, when it came to getting people to allow me to document these uh, things. And, you know, I had, I, I have, I had to, of course, do my due diligence. I had to go through the district. I had to go through yeah. the Special Olympics, Texas and stuff like that and just let them know what I was doing and being up and up with that. Um, um, but everyone throughout the whole process was supportive of uh, getting the project done and getting people, you know, their their voices heard. Man, that, that's that's cool. Because you would yeah. have, again, because it is a protect, protected subject. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times, you know, even in news, you, there's there's certain boundaries that you should not cross ethically right there's certain boundaries you need to cross because it just it's it's better for the quality of information that you're putting out um and 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 i don't know man it, it, I, i've gone through a lot of those like ethical questions and i'm like man i don't know if i could 
You know, yeah. one, what's personal to me, but two is like, can I really tell the story and paint that light of them without having to like keep the cameras rolling when they're crying or keep the cameras rolling when it's not a good day, you know? Yeah. What I mean? And you're like, fuck dude, do, how do I portray this? You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I would say, you know, uh, being a documentary filmmaker, uh, you know, you, you, uh, ethically, yeah. You want to just be, you know, is, as sensitive to the people's um, reactions as possible, you know, so you're always checking in and saying, Hey, you know, could I, would you, would you mind if I use that? And, you know, um, I never ran into anybody saying no, you know what I'm saying? But no. also, you know, I, I did have to have the conversation uh, a couple of times where it's just like, Hey, you know, I have, I have this footage, you know, you get pretty emotional in the footage. I, I'm going to use it. Um, you know, and they'd be like, Oh, of course, you know, go, you know, you just do what you need to do. Uh, but, um, you know, that's ultimately what those once people signed on, you know, to the film, that's those are what those releases were for, you know, is so that if if I got somebody in an emotional state, you know, I can use that footage if need be. Um, but, you know, just on a personal level, though, I, I, I wanted to make sure that I checked in with them before I did. You know what I mean? Because, yeah, you know, you can use the footage they signed up for it, whatever. But. Uh, from an ethical standpoint, I just wanted everyone to be, um, you know, especially the parents, you know, when they would get emotional about talking about their kids and stuff like that. I just wanted to make sure that everyone was on the same page uh, and um, knew what I was trying to do. And um, every all the subjects were supportive of it. And um, when when they saw the film, they they absolutely loved it. So that was a good feeling to get the the recognition from them and the approval from them to um, to say, oh yeah, like that was a very vulnerable moment that I had uh, yeah. on film. Uh, but you know, I, I loved it in, the, in the movie, it looked, it, you know, it worked and uh, I'm glad that you portray that. So, um, you know, I had multiple subjects come up to me after and, and tell me that. So that was a good feeling. That was, that was one where it's like my integrity, you know, my ethical stance. Uh, I felt my, my compass was, was uh, pointing North at, at that moment. You know what I mean? So, and that was very important nice. to me when I, when nice. I did it. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's beautiful, man. Cause yeah, as a filmmaker, that's one of the biggest things that we try to do. We try to emote something in people, you know, yeah. that, that, and that's, that's it. That's the, that's the, the final thing that you should as a filmmaker try to do emote. Um, but with a documentary, like I said, or when we started, it's hard because sometimes most people as soon as you say, oh, it's a documentary, automatically the lights go off and you're like, ah, dude, it's right, a right. boring fucking stupid documentaries about trees or about fucking animals and why we should see the <laughs> forest and right. yada, yada, so forth. But with yours, it was totally different because like I said, I sat down and from the minute I sat down, I was like, wow, okay. And that was my first initial reaction. I was like, wow, okay, let, let, let's take this journey. Yeah, well, and I appreciate I that, man. Thank and you so much. That means a lot. I was like, fuck, dude. This motherfucker yeah. got me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, there, uh, there was a couple, you know, there, there weren't a lot of dry dry eyes in the house, which which is good. You know, that's that's ultimately, I wanted to invoke emotion. I wanted people to, uh, I wanted to use that, um, you know, that avenue to to get people to understand more about what's going on in the school districts and stuff like that and what it really needs uh you know what what it really takes and what it what needs to happen uh to to get these kids um you know the services that they they deserve you know what i mean so yeah. um but by doing that and you know making people happy or making people you know um i i hope they were happy tears you know what i'm saying like that's yeah. that was that was the you know that that's the goal um but you know to get uh, you know, to that point, you know, and to get people to pay attention, um, sometimes you gotta, you gotta really try to invoke that emotion, as you know, as a filmmaker as well. Yeah. So I, I really enjoyed your, your film as well, by the way. So I just wanted to mention, <laughs> I, meant, I meant to say that at the beginning, Sacred Mask was freaking awesome, dude. So thank you for the shameless plug. Thank you. Yeah, no worries, man. It's, it was I, good. This paid advertisement was brought to you by, you know, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> now, um, you've, you, you had the film circuit. How has that, how has that been for you? Again, documentary is hard sometimes, but how has it been? Because has well, you were well received at Heiko, which is a Western, you know, themed uh, film festival. But other festivals, how have they, you know, received your film? 
Yeah, of course. Um, so I, I've been in, um, in the San Antonio F uh, SA Film Festival. Um, I, I've I've been in the San Angelo uh, Film Festival, and and then uh, Billy the Kid. Um, uh, I've, I I just got accepted to um, uh, Blow Up Art House, uh, Blow Up uh, Art House Film Festival in Chicago. Nice. Um, so that I was I was pretty excited about that one as well. Um, but yeah, you know, four on the run so far is, is, is pretty, uh, amazing. You know, um, they were, they were received well at, at each, uh, place, uh, San, San Antonio, we sold out. Um, there was a lot of local, you know, families and, and, you know, uh, staff and stuff like that. So, but I was, I was floored that we, we sold out at San Antonio, uh, San Angelo, you know, wonderful reception as well. And then, of course, over in Heiko um, at the BTKFF, the Billy the Kid, you know, film festival, um, we, you know, I I was very happy with with um, with how people reacted to it as well. So, uh, you know, we're, we're still have about eight more festivals that we're in contention for that we're waiting to hear for. Um, you know, I've, I've gotten a couple unofficial nods, but I don't count my chicks until they're hatched. You know what I mean? So, yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, it's it's been a, it's been it's been really cool. It's been a really cool experience. Uh, you know, I want to go to more. I want to. I, I really enjoy meeting other filmmakers like yourself and um, getting to know them and and just see what you know happens from the relationships that are built at these things. Um, is is really what I'm finding is is um, the the hidden gem that I didn't even expect. You know what I'm saying? Like I was just excited to get my film out there and get it seen by people. But you know, uh, just being on on this uh, on this run with the film festival, uh, with the film festival circuit is. Um, Meeting, meeting everyone is just the best part. You know what I mean? It's just, you know, people like yourself that just, you, you get a bunch of people that are passionate about what they do. You get them in a room. Uh, I'm a firm believer that nothing but good things can happen, you know? Yeah, so. I, I I really was. This was my, my first festival was all three days I, I attended. Um, and man, I had a lot of fun. Because normally I just go see my screening and then take off because it's one, two days, whatever. And it's the yeah. level. But with this one, of course, it was a drive. And and I really enjoyed it because, like you said, you know, I sat there with other people, uh, especially, I forget his name, um, Sean. From yeah, Sean was a cool dude, man. Yeah. And and we sat there and we bullshit. And I was like, dude, he's from New York. He's he's having the same, you know, problems, same issues, same wants, same desires, everything as a filmmaker from Texas. And he's in New York yeah with his stuff and we connected real quick and i was like wow that that is cool because you, you know you always see those memes it's like oh you like film i like film oh we just became best friends yeah right exactly <laughs> yeah right yeah and hell yeah dude too. and then it was the same way automatically i was like oh shit we we started talking but of course it was it, it, it was based out of love of film yeah of course yeah of course and it's just you know like you have these you have, it, it, to, to to circle back you know to it is it's the love of film right that that's what really kind of drives us as filmmakers and i'm you know um you you go to these festivals and you and you see things that are very unique it's and and very um you know personal you know what i'm saying you yeah. see a lot of, a lot of personal um blood sweat and tears put into these films and 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 it shows and it shines through you know and um you know i just hope that that i can continue to um you know go and 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 meet you know people like yourself and like sean and and just um, you know, continue this process and and just be around people that are positive and and um, and, ex and and excited to you know to create you know, and that's what it boils down to. It's it's about the process and it's about creating and and um, you you get it out in front of people. That's just you know that's gravy. You know that's that's a that's just a really cool bonus. Oh yeah. Now yeah. I got a question for you. How have you dealt with the negative aspect of doing the documentary or or being received? or being told no, or fuck off, or whatever, because there's always that. Sure. I think more, maybe, just me speaking, I think more as a documentary maker, you would receive more negativity. Sure. As opposed to a regular, like, feature film, because again, like I said, the, the connotation of... Right. Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, there's there's definitely stigmas attached to it, especially when you have uh, your your subject matter is you know, people with uh, special needs. But I think if, if you go into it and you explain what you're trying to, you know, get across, uh, you know, most people will 
uh, be accepting of it and and help you, you know, with the process. Now, before I came over to Northeast ISD and I did, um, you know, the film uh, adapt, um, you know, I tried to implement it and try to to get it done over at, a, at another school district. I won't say the school district, but it was my previous yeah. school district that that I was at. And I was I was told, no, you know, I was told, no, you can't do that. The logistics of it would just be too much. This, that, and the other thing. Um, so, you know, it, it, that was that was tough. And that was, you know, about two years before I, you know, actually got to to do it here in, in San Antonio um, and had, you know, more support from, you know, my higher ups and and from my my team. And everyone was just, you know, so, you know, uh, accommodating and, and great, you know, when it came to that process. But, yeah, you, you get told no, you know, sometimes. And um, that was when I, when I got told no at my previous district, it was kind of uh, it was kind of, you know, a heartbreak. I, it broke my heart a little bit. I was just like, well, I want to do this really nice thing and people aren't going to let me do this really nice thing is, you know, what it boils down to, <laughs> yeah. you know? And, and I was just like, all right, well, I guess, you know, on to the next thing. So at that point in my life, you know, I just started writing, uh, more, I did, you know, a couple scripts and, um, you know, submitted those to, you know, film festivals and kind of got involved with that. And, you know, since I've, I've had, you know, three or four, you know, feature, uh, spec scripts, um, some are award winning, some, you know, are just sitting on the pile, you know, but uh, it just is what it is sometimes. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you just got to keep on pushing forward. I think I think, you know, you, you're going to be told no. Um, and you got to be respectful of people's decisions when they do that. But, you know, there's always another avenue that you can take to to get your your goals accomplished. And that's what I found through this process. Oh, badass. Now, you said you had a couple of spec scripts for feature yeah. films. Yeah. What are you looking at? Uh yeah. So I have uh, I had one that I wrote um right after uh you know I, I had gotten divorced and and it was it was kind of about that. Uh and, and it was under the you know frame of being a coach and stuff like that. And okay. and how uh you know, because I honestly and truly like, you know, once once you're in the Special Olympics or you're in it's a huge part of your life. It's a huge part of your day of the day. So like for me to pick this as subject matter was kind of a no brainer because, because I live it, you know what I mean? So, yeah. um, so my, the award-winning spec script that I had was, was about that and just going through uh, a divorce, you know, finding, finding love again. Um, you know, uh, also it, trying, trying to, um, be the best you can through, you know, what, what your, what your responsibilities are and stuff like that. So, uh, again, special Olympics, you know, uh, oriented in a, in a, in a way, um, but that's fiction. A lot of it is, you know, based loosely off of yeah. it. It's it's fiction. Um, it's a it's a narrative. Uh, but um, Drum. you know, the other the other one uh, is you know I have I have a couple horror film shorts. Um, I have uh, one that uh, a feature length that I co wrote with my with a guy I do a podcast with uh, named uh, Rolando, and um, we we do a a conspiracy podcast it, it, so it's it's kind of like um like looking at it from the frame of like i'm kind of like a, a, a like a skeptic and he's kind of like believes in more of the conspiracy stuff yeah um but just like having an open dialogue not being you know um dismissive of ideas and and just kind of going over them you know and just you know stating them and stuff like that so we wrote a horror film uh and that one um, he's actually uh, sent off to a couple places, so we're we're looking forward to that. And then, and then just writing, you know, just around here with the with the short, you know, forty eight hour film festivals and stuff like that. Um, I have another one that I wrote with my cousin, uh, but that one's just kind of it's a working title, so I don't it's I don't really <laughs> like I don't really like to talk about that one. All so, right. Yeah. Now you said you had a podcast, but and yeah. I know when we started, you said you had a couple of podcasts. Yeah. Yeah. So, so tell us about that. Cause I mean, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm like, where do you find the time? Yeah, that's oh, I don't I'm have, I don't, to... I, I don't have any man. Uh, it, uh, it, that's, that's basically what it boils down to. Um, I, I, uh, I try to, um, I have a, I have a great group of people. So, um, my, my co host on uh, the theory of conspiracy, um, you know, we'll, we'll take turns editing those podcasts and getting them out there. And then I have one, um, and those just, you know, talk about, you know, the current event, you know, conspiracy theories and stuff like that. Um, excuse me. And we don't get too deep into the weeds. We just kind of prudence, you know, pre present the idea. And then the other one is about, um, it's called head trauma and it's about uh, true crime. And then the movies that 
the the two the true crime events like yeah. uh kind of influence and so we'll we'll do an episode where we talk about the actual true crime and then we'll do another episode where we talk about the movie that was inspired by the true, true crime and they're usually back to back right. so and then that one is um you know i have a group of about five people six people working on that one with me so that one is is more of uh you know i'll edit the episode but like all the social media stuff is done by you know a couple of the other people that are involved and stuff like that so Okay. But yeah, social media takes up most of the time, you know, talking and, yeah. and, and on the podcast is, is one thing, but then editing it and breaking it down in the smaller pieces is a completely different thing, you know? So. Yeah. I think I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm the same way. Cause I suck at yeah. social media and right. I wish I could have a better grasp on it or even like more help. And that that's always the issue that everybody wants to do the thing, but they don't want to do the post. Right. Or the right. marketing stuff, and that I, oh man, as a filmmaker, I think that's one of the biggest challenges for us because we we want to be creative, but right. the business or the back end, we like ah, we we stray away so far from it, you know. Yeah, right. Well, I mean, I'm I'm kind of learning that as I go. You know, you asked me before, I'll just put myself out there, but you know, hey, do you have an IMDb for your movie? And I'm like, oh, I was actually going to do that today, you know. So, you know, I'm I'm learning as I go with the marketing and stuff like yeah. that, and I'm I'm in talks with people that are kind of pointing me in the right direction. And, um, you know, when it comes to the marketing and the, and the distribution side of it, but, you know, we got a little bit of time since, you know, we're still on the film festival circuit, but like little things that you just don't think about, you know, like making a poster for your movie and stuff like that. And, yeah. you know, so, um, and, uh, and having it at the festivals and, you know, stuff like that, it, you know, I, it, it was kind of lost on me. I was just trying to get the film done, you know, and now that it's shown, you know, and, and having a little bit of a su success in the film festival circuit, it's like, oh, wait, I have to learn all this stuff. So that's, that's kind of where I'm at. I'm in at the learning, I'm in the learning process of, of the marketing and getting it distributed and stuff like that. So, uh, well, oh, wait, well, distribution, that's another beast right there. You're going to have to tackle on. I that's, I'm learning it as we go right now. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a whole thing, man. So, um, it, it's a it's a learning curve, um, but I'm I'm excited to do it and I'm excited to learn about it because, you know, it's I just want to get it out to as many people as possible, you know. So that's, but you're absolutely right, man. It's a it's a learning curve for sure. Yeah, because I know for distribution, we, the well, our first film, we got lucky, but we had to make a decision because we went through self distribution, so we mm -hmm. went Amazon, and that was a beast because again with Amazon we had to like you said think about thumbnails and and splash and this and that the meta this and you know mezzanine for that and i was like what the hell is all that shit because i was like dude i'm happy i made a movie and it got accepted so we did that and we that was a learning curve by itself but then when the distributor actually asked for the film he was like, yeah i need three tracks to you know separate this this and that and we need this and that and i was like wow and he's like well you want dvd i'm like Sure. I thought it was easy. You know, yeah. Like, yeah, sure. We'll go with DVD. He's like, okay, I need, you know, some pictures for the, for the DVD. I need description for that. I'm like, I mean, he ended up changing it anyways. But sure. I was like, wow, dude, that, that was a big learning curve on yeah. from self-distribution to distributor. And now we're back at it again with our film. And I'm like, fuck, dude, that's, yeah, you never really think about it. Yeah. Oh, as a and, and it's and that's what I'm that's that's actually what I'm learning, you know, now is is all that stuff. You know, you you don't you, you think about it, you think about, oh yeah, this is a poster. You don't you don't think about like, yeah, well, I have to also have other media, you know, for you know, yeah. get getting a streaming and and uh, for the DVD sleeve or the Blu-ray sleeve or whatever you want to, you know, call it. And then yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. It's it's but you know, I'm I'm happy to learn it right now. I'm just it, I, I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like I know it all. Um, but I'm just happy to be a part of it and just happy to, you know, have the opportunity to learn it. Cause a lot of people don't even have that opportunity to learn it. So yeah. I'm just, yeah, very excited about it. It's always a blessing, bro. And, yeah. and, and I'm, I'll be the first one to say the same thing. I'm like, dude, I'm, I still don't have a grasp of half the shit they asked for. And I'm, I'm constantly having to Google it or, or, or ask a buddy. I'm like, bro, did you do this? Right. Um, the, the biggest learning curve this time around was, we tried to have it in the actual Santicos film mm. and they're like, Oh, well you need DST file for it. And I was like, what is a DST file? Yeah. Right. Because most film festivals don't ask you for DST files unless they're big ones. And I was like, okay, cool. So we learned that. And it took us about a week to produce one. 
Yeah. Because if you don't have that competing power or whatever, it's, like, it's going to take you a minute. Yeah. And I passed around and I was like, man, dude, what the fuck, dude? And yeah. And it just translates different because it's not a really film film. It's a picture film or something like that. I, anyways. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I had to learn that this time around, too. So I was like, I mean, I, I, I was, uh, yeah, I, I, all that stuff is, you know, I, I was, I was lucky enough to have someone that helped me with the editing. So when I formatted it, he, he kind of was like, well, if you want it on this, you need this. If you need it, if you want it on this, you need this. And so he, you know, he kind of helped me and, and, and uh, get all the settings <laughs> set where they needed to be. Cause that's yeah. a little bit above my pay grade. I had to pay somebody else to like get all that stuff done, but you know, you, you figure it out, right? I mean, that's that's what we do we, as filmmakers. We figure out how to make something um, that wasn't, you know, you know. In, in all honesty, like you know, it it. Some days I'm like, oh, I'm amazed at like what I what I accomplished, you know. And then and then other days it's like, oh, I just got to do this, this, and this to get it going, you know. So <laughs> you, you you have your different days, you know. But yeah. if you step back from it, you're like, you got to realize you, you you're doing your best and you and you're making you're making art, and that's all that really matters. That's badass, bro. Yeah. Now, um, from here, what's next for you? Yeah, so um, the forty dollars film project that we did, uh, we you know uh, we had a best a best actress. We had you know uh, we were up for best cinematography. Uh, we were up for best what film. We it? didn't. Uh, it was called on. Un- it was called unrest. It was a thriller. It was a psychological thriller about uh, a woman uh, that is thinking she's being chased in in a motel, um, and uh, and then we we find out through the course of it that she might've had a mental break and um, oh. she, she is, uh, we're, we're, we're trying to put to, to, together, you know, w- what happened towards the end. And I don't want to, you know, spoil the end, but um, right. we got, we got some good reviews on it. And, and uh, like I said, the $40 film festival received it pretty well. Uh, Madison. Oh my goodness. You're putting me on the spot. Um, <laughs> and yeah. Worry, but... yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> her name is Madison. She's amazing. She, she, she did a really good job and we're going to work. Uh, together you know on on this upcoming one so basically what happened is they they took the top performing uh things and and now throughout the nation uh we're one of i don't know i would say about you know i would say 50 to 100 teams that are uh going to compete to uh, do another 48 um and then uh, the winner of that goes to the the con film festival in france so nice. but, yeah yeah so yeah man yeah yeah so you know well, we're gonna put our best foot forward and and see what happens so I think we'll, we'll I think we'll do it. Cool. Well, I I wish you the best of luck on that one. Thanks, brother. But as far as you as a filmmaker with your film and everything else that you have on on your plate, um, what are you going to continue or or what's next? Big, you know, picture for, for adapt. Yeah. So the the Chicago one's coming up. I'm excited about that. Uh, you know, we're just I'm in talks right now. I'm learning the stuff that we just talked about. The, the yeah. you know being with a distributor and whatnot. Uh, and um. So, but we still have, I mean, we still have until probably April, April or May is when I, when I'm, my run's going to complete, I feel, um, I, I could go until August. I could find a couple, you know, other ones, but I think, you know, the, with the range of film festivals I got into, if I make it into like one or two more, I'll be over the moon, you know, and it, to be completely honest, like I, you know, making it into four, um, you know, I was happy. I was like, I, if I make it into three, I'll be happy. Yeah. And then making it now I'm on number four and, and moving forward. So, <laughs> yeah, so it's so, but uh, yeah, just waiting for that, uh, you know, that run to be done. Cause I do want to complete that. And then uh, just getting, getting the film out to as many people as possible. And and uh, really in the next couple of weeks here, just kind of getting the, the, the infrastructure down with the IMDB page and, you know, the social media pages and stuff like that. Um, uh, you know, I, there was different rules of thought about putting, making a, a social media page before you went to the circuits. You wanted to like have a couple, like at least the person I was looking at said that you wanted to have a couple under your belt and then you have content to put on your social media page and stuff like that. So, um, so just creating all that stuff um, so that now that it's uh, leaving the circuit um, and going to, uh, you know, mainstream, you know, the public um, so that it has a, it has an avenue for people to find it and stuff like that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, again, you want people to watch it, you know? Yeah. Um, especially because it has a great message, bro. Thanks, man. Uh, so yeah, I, I would love to see it in, in the streaming services to where we could recommend be like, hey, dude, follow this guy. It's just I had to bring you on because again, it made yeah. a, an impact when I watched it. So I was like, I had I, I want to talk to you on a personal level. Yeah, man. I appreciate on you. A podcast to maybe give you that little boost. Well, thanks, man. Um, you know, I mean, I have three 
three faithful followers for the last five years. So yeah. There you go. <laughs> nice, nice. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, well, that's, that's all awesome. that matters. <laughs> well, I I fought, you got one the other day. I followed I followed the 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 podcast because I was just like, oh heck yeah, dude! This is this is really cool. I listened to a couple episodes too, so, ah, very, yeah, so. very very happy to yeah, okay, four. Here, yeah, dude. Hell four damn followers. All right, there we I'm go. <laughs> yeah, number four for sure. Now, how do you do? Oh well, let's ask you about that with your podcast. How do you do your streaming, or how do you do your growth, or or how do you go about with that? Yeah, so uh, we we do Spotify. Uh, we we post on Spotify for podcasters, and that gets us out to pretty much anywhere you can listen to your podcast. Um, that, that's always uh, uh, getting getting you know everything connected to that. Um, I guess uh, station more than anything. Um, it, you know, it, it takes time. You know, and uh, but we're you know we're streaming on Apple Podcast and and Spotify and you know, all, all the ones that are, you know, available now, Amazon, you know, music, stuff like that. So, uh, getting it out to people, uh, we, we did like a Instagram push, you know, so, you know, with our friends and family on Instagram for both shows, uh, we have TikToks. um, those seem to be doing, and then, you know, we will have, you know, sponsored, uh, we'll have sponsored posts and stuff like that, that gets it out to people that might not necessarily, um, have it come across their algorithm on you know either spotify or apple yeah. but you know we're, we're reaching out we're, co we're continually growing on both shows um and uh you know it's we, we got to figure something out because it's 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 taken a toll with having two of these things it's it's takes a lo long time for post-production <laughs> so sometimes my post-production social media stuff um the one show had trauma has been delegated out so that's that's great it's less but you know the other one the, the conspiracy one i'm kind of just kind of heading the ship on that one and it's um just trying to keep it you know relevant and up to date is 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 a task you know it's it's yeah. almost like a full-time job in itself so but you know you know how it goes so <laughs> well finding y'all to come on it, it's not hard to get filmmakers like yourself to talk about yourself because yeah as filmmakers we always want to talk about our film no, of course, we want to talk about what we're doing. That's the easy part. Finding the specific filmmakers I'm looking for is the hard part. That to me is is the challenge. And and most of us have real lives, so scheduling. Everybody tell me always ask me is like, well, what's the date that you record? I'm like, I record whenever you're free. Yeah, right, right. Again, I have to work on your schedule. Um, but yeah, the the. the having to schedule everybody and then not have such a big long gaps has always been my issue. Yeah. Yeah. The post-production, it sucks. Cause yeah, you have to, it takes time, you know, like it, it takes know. time for sure. Yeah. It does take time. I, I I'm, I'm very lucky that I have people in my corner and um, my teammates, you know, that I'm in their corner as well is, is uh, you know, they, they put their best foot forward. You know, sometimes I'm just like, Oh man, I, I find it, I kind of dropped the ball there, but then like someone will, you know, pick it up and run with it. So it's, it's always, it's always good to have a team. Nice. How long have you had your team for or how the, the group, the core group that you have? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, um, uh, you know, growing up for, for the film people, uh, you know, we've always been making film. There's about like, you know, five, four or five of us. And, um, we always, you know, been doing something creative, um, documentaries, narratives, uh, you know, a lot of them are musicians. I'm not one. Um, but they've, they, I've been friends with them since you know, middle school and, uh, you know, earlier than that too, but we really cemented our, our friendship in middle school and, you know, we're all kind of, um, you know, bohemian artists in the sense where we kind of <laughs> like, we, we work our jobs, but like our main, our main goal is always to create yeah. something, you know? So, um, and then with the podcasts, um, you know, it's, it's, a it's a family, uh, driven show. Um, so there's a lot of cousins and, and, you know, uh, my, my, parents you know are involved with it as well oh, wow. um just yeah. because just because we you know we 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 enjoy that um topic you know we, yeah. we enjoy the macabre you know so um so yeah so that that's been going on for about two years now so and it's just it's really nice it's it's nice you know being around people that you grew up with and and that, that are are still passionate about making you know content and, and uh, getting stuff out there so that is badass bro it yes sir not only do you have your core family, but you have a film family. Now, yeah. do, they, do they ever intersect or is it just like, no? Yeah, of course. You know, like film and, and podcast is podcast. Uh, you, you know, sometimes uh, podcast is podcast and, and film is film. Uh, 
you know, I have, I have, uh, you know, I've, I've made a lot of, uh, good friends here in San Antonio that are involved with film and, and it's usually separate, you know what I mean? So, uh, but you know, more and more, uh, I think that the, the two worlds are, are melding together. So it's, it's just a matter of time, you know what I mean? Before everyone's, I, you know, I'm just excited to just be able to do stuff like this and, and to, uh, and to, uh, you know, you know, meet people like yourself and just, nice. yes, sir. So with the, the previous film, and I, I forgot to ask you about that, because you said you did a previous documentary. What was that one yeah. about? So, yeah, that one was like kind of like a, a, like a meta take on, um, on my relationship with my uncle, uh, who always wanted to be a filmmaker. And uh, my cousin and I uh, always wanted to be filmmakers. And he's a writer as well. And he, he uh, just got into some festivals with his stuff. Um, but uh, we, we filmed, you know, interviews with him about how he always wanted to be a filmmaker. Um, but he was, he was also, you know, kind of, uh, uh, gotten into some trouble in the late eighties and early nineties, um, and, and stuff like that, uh, uh, dr drugs, you know, stuff like you know, of that nature. And then, uh, went to a mental hospital. Um, and now, now he's fine. Now he's out. He's a security guard. He's doing great. You know what I mean? But we, we follow him and, um, and in his stories about how he just kind of never, uh, you know, took that leap to be a filmmaker and how he was kind of, this was his like shot to do it with us, you know? So, and that's, that's what that one is about. And that one played in a couple uh, festivals, um, but it wasn't, uh, it wasn't as clean as the one that I, I, I put forward this, you know, this go around. And I didn't really know the ins and outs of, you know, what it takes in post-production to, to get something like that accomplished and to looking and sounding great, you know? I would say like the audio levels were just atrocious on that one, but we're all, we're, 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 we're our own worst critics, you know what I mean? Yeah. As filmmakers and stuff like that. But, you know, sometimes you just got to put stuff down and, and then just uh, come back to it later. But um, yeah, but that was the first one. And, and that was really kind of my, I went to school, like I said, for, you know, media and radio television production and stuff like that. But that one was kind of my film school, you know, and I learned more so what not to do and, and how to manage time and to get, you know, cause that one like took me like two or, two, you know, three, four years. I couldn't even count how many years it took. And it was like a short, you know, 30 minute thing because I just didn't know what to do with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't know, um, I, you know, I had the, the technical experience, but I didn't have the storytelling experience to, to really convey it. Um, and, and like I said, it was received and, 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 uh, in a couple of festivals, but, um, that one is just kind of like, uh, my you know uh training wheels if you will you know what i mean to to help me learn how to make a you know a better film so but it is what it is you learn from all these things that you do as bad as so let me ask you one important question that i ask a lot of people yeah to film school or not to film school uh i think i think it just really depends on your personality um you know personally speaking uh you know i i don't think i i could have done it without having some uh traditional uh background but you, you got to remember when i was going to school i'm i'm an older dude um when i was going to school it was uh there was not youtube was just fate, fate to put in perspective facebook had just become a thing youtube had just yeah. become a thing um so there wasn't this avenue that a lot of kids have now where you could learn all the technical stuff and learn all of the stuff through like youtube tutorials and you know yeah. master classes yeah. and stuff like that and you know online universities and stuff like that um you, you had to go and you had to learn you had to be in front of the teacher they had to you know see how oh, can you can you spot this light can you you know do you know how to grip do you know you know stuff like that and and so uh, <clears throat> uh nowadays if i if i had to do it all over i wouldn't change a thing but if if let's say i have a magic wand and i'm you know 20 years old you can learn <laughs> so much you know on youtube that i i recommend that people start there and if and if you have a passion or you want to get more into the theory of filmmaking or creating you know videos and stuff like that and you know different angles and and what they what they represent i mean there's books out there on there um but by all means you know go to school as well you know so i i don't i don't poo poo on anybody's you know some people need to have that structure other people can just you know kind of learn via the youtube or whatever so I think any avenue is great as long as you're making content, you're making stuff. Um, I'm I'm for it, regardless of what avenue you choose to get there. I like that answer. 
A very well, it's very democratic, but I like the fact that you said it doesn't matter as long as yeah. you create because at the end of the day, our goal is again to emote. If you can't emote, if you don't create yeah. yourself out there and so forth. Man. So last thing. Um yes. personal shout outs. Um, how can we find you? Where do we find you? What's you know, let us know. Yeah, so so I yeah, I don't have an IMDB uh, page yet. Um I have a couple ID IMDB credits. I just don't have a page to anchor them to. Um so so that's gonna be on the agenda. So uh it's gonna be Michael uh William Roth uh on there eventually. Um and then uh you know you can find me over at uh uh Instagram, uh bad underscore yeti is where you can find me. So B A D and then Yeti Y E T I. And if you type those in, you'll, you'll find me. I'm, I'm, I'm top of the list there. And so, uh, but yeah, that you'll have, uh, that's kind of like my personal account and you'll have, you know, updates on film festivals and stuff on that one. Uh, the, the podcast is head trauma pod, uh, and then the theory of conspiracy. And you can find either of those on Instagram or Spotify or where, wherever you listen to your podcasts. So those are the, those are the main places, man, that you can find me. Cool, cool. Now, as far as your film, the current film right now that you were, you were, you're in the festival run, yeah. Uh, any other information or just straight Instagram, at least for right now? Yeah, Instagram for right now. Um, I'll be creating a page, like I said. Uh, you know, for for that. Uh, I like I said, I'm I'm new to the marketing and and the distribution of it, and uh, just getting into the festivals was like an accomplishment for me. So um learning we're learning this uh is you know there's there's a learning curve for me so that's bad. But, uh, no, like, yeah hey, yeah nothing wrong with it we we all got we all got to go somewhere somewhere you yeah. know what I mean? and how we go about it and learn it, it it's that's the magic of what we do yeah it's a process man that's that's yeah. what i'm finding out more and more so uh but yeah bad bad yeti is going to be the main place that you can find me if you want to get in contact with me um and uh, I do have links attached, you know, to the to other stuff on that as well. So, badass, badass, badass. Yes, Thank sir. You. I do appreciate you coming on. Hey, and I appreciate you having me, man. Thank you so much, bro. You're a movie, like I said. I sat down with like, okay, fine. I'll take I'll take the ride with you. Yeah. You know, not really expecting that that already, like, oh fuck, it's a documentary. But at the end of the day, yeah, I I was like, man, this asshole got me. <laughs> good, 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 I'm man. over here yeah, trying to be all manly next to my 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 wife, and I'm like, oh yeah, that's a good movie. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, man. That means a lot. I I really really appreciate it, and I'm, you know, uh, I I try I try to, uh, uh, I when I, when I when I made this, and you know, I try not to, I try to keep you know a distance from from the crying, but I, I I'll do I will catch myself as well you know tearing up on it and it, I've seen the thing like a hundred times so it's just uh, I I in me personally it's just it's an overwhelming like sense of like uh, of happiness that uh, I was able to uh, document that and and have that available you know out there for everyone so and just seeing people's reactions to it really kind of affects me as well so it, it means a lot man I, I thank you so much and thank you for having me on and and just thanks man uh, no problem Mike and, and again keep going on bro did, did... I want to see where you land a couple months from now and where you're at and, and what's the next, you know, big thing for you. Cause if, if, if the movie that you have now is an indicator where you're going to be like several months from now, or even a year from now. Wow. <laughs> well, wow. Hey man, that's this is, really this is the second film. Really, so this is, I, 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 that's really kind, man. Thank you so much. I, that means a lot. Thank you so much, man. No, I, I again, thank you one for, for your film too, for, for coming on board and, and really giving us a lot of, you know, that, that heart positivity that we need. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. We do. We do definitely need a lot more positivity in the world and, and you've brought that with your film. So thanks dude. Thank right. you so much. And again, guys. Man, oh, good. I, I would love to come on anytime. You know, this is a great show guys. And I just, I just glad to be a part of it. So thank you again. Awesome, bro. Again, guys. Um, to all my film noobs out there, um, bro, it, if you have a chance to go to film festivals or, or have a chance to look at Mike's work, please do so. Um, once he gets up and running, click on it. Click like. Um, like I tell everybody uh, every week, you know, keep watching film, but keep hitting like, keep subscribing, help these guys out because, you know, independent film depends on 
the people watching it, you know, the people liking it, the people subscribing, so forth. Um, and and you don't have to like our show by all means, but do go out and check out these guys' work. Um, watch it, you know, hey, hey, you know, just watching it sometimes helps them out. So please, again, every week I, I say the same thing, guys, and y'all hear me constantly say this, but keep watching film. Until next time, guys, you know, be film noob, keep watching with that those those hungry eyes. And until next time, we'll see y'all again. Mike, thank you. Thanks again, man. All right. Have a good one, guys. <laughs>